staying with music and the theatre. And we go to the story of a young county Waterford man whose love of music absolutely transformed his life. Now, many of us might have thought from time to time that we could doodle, scribble out an attempt at a song, but few would even contemplate the uh, challenge of uh, composing a full-scale musical performance uh, to be performed by uh, a large orchestra. But that's exactly what uh, young Pierre uh, O'Reilly did, and he says it's only the beginning. So we went down to Lismore to meet this energetic young maestro. For some people, dedicating their lives to the arts means leaving the safety and security of a traditional job. Pierre O'Reilly is an example of how taking a risk and pursuing a passion can bring happiness. I suppose I see my mum is French and my father's Irish and we would have went to France every year on the ferry and I was obsessed with these big chunks of steel coming into the port. And so when it came to choosing the options, Liam sort of decided, right, I'll do nautical science because I didn't really have any interest in music at the time. I didn't know what I wanted to achieve in music. So I did nautical science and um, then spent four years in the Merchant Navy. But the first, I suppose, the first two years were on container ships and we would have run between Montreal and Europe. Uh, the latter half of my career at sea was based on cruise ships. And uh, that was a real eye opener because they had a baby Steinway piano on board. And so I'd finished my watch on the bridge at midnight and I'd come down and I'd play away for maybe an hour. And so from then on, I used to do a half an hour recital of my own work for passengers. And it was down as a second officer, Pierre O'Reilly performs his own music. I decided when I went back to do my chief officers and my captain's license, that um, it was during that year in NMCI, the Maritime College down in Ring Skiddy, that I said, right, I'm gonna pack all this in and um, take a year out and go into music. Uh, full time. I love the sea and I love the ships and everything about it um, and I left at a really good time because I have nothing but fond memories of it uh, but I wouldn't go back there and I think being broke is an unbelievable incentive to, to, to create more you know in the art form and to, and to believe in yourself and to try and make it. For me um, I need to compose, or I need to try to compose every every two or three days, and if I don't, I crack up. And it's an unbelievable form of expression. You know, if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're happy, you just take it out on the piano. It's quite a personal thing, you know, when you write a piece of music and you lay it out there. And once the piece of music is written, that's it, it's done. And you let audiences engage with that. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. If they do, they do. Um, but it's still you putting your personality, because a lot of people will come up to you afterwards and you might see, uh, particularly amongst women, and they come up and they go, you know, their face is covered in black because they've been bawling, crying during the concert. And they're like, damn you, you've covered me in mascara. I'm like, well, that's success, in my view. But uh, some of them will come up and say, you know, what possessed you to write a piece that sad? And, you know, and so you, you, you open your, what, I suppose you, you open a certain element of you up to the public. And um, that's quite personal, but it's, it's a great experience, yeah. So when you come back as a mature student, like what I did, I knew what I wanted to achieve in that time frame. Um, and so I had certain goals that I wanted to achieve whilst I was in CSM. He is very uh, sensitive to uh, portrayal of visual subjects and this has been quite clear in all of his projects, uh, working with, with um, the visual aspect of music and uh, being able to evoke you know, a range of emotions through his music. My father had said to me, you should do something on St. Patrick. And I said, no, 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 Dad, that's a bit cliched and it's, it's too obvious and then the more and more I thought about it I said right I can do this but I can't do I, I need to present it in a new and original way so remove all the kind of ideas we have of him and present him like a real man and we've got Nicky Phelan from Dublin um, who's done the illustrations he was um, nominated for an Oscar last year uh, Cara Sullivan is singing Mark Dalton is narrating and we have an orchestra and choir of 90 people musicians on stage and they'll just tell the story of this man called Patrick who happened to be a saint 
of ours thousands of years later. Patrick was a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, Pierre O'Reilly approached my sister, who uh, sings in the Fleischmann Choir, and said, is there any chance Carl would come in and do this for me? Be legend, savage. And I said, I met him. Um, I really liked him. I liked his style and his approach in asking me. And I said, yeah, let's go for it. For me, it's, it's massive. Uh, you have an orchestra and choir of 90 people. Um, then on the periphery, uh, you have about 35 to 40 people. In. There's, yeah, there's about 130 people involved in this project. Pierre said to me last week, Connor, you know, I've done all I can do now, it's up to you. And, uh, you know, I was, thanks very much, Pierre, that's, that's great to know. But he was right, you know, he had, he had written all the music, he had organised all this PR and all the advertising was done. And it's basically down to me then to bring his music alive. My, my main job is to get the music right. The second thing that was really important in this was me being a psychiatrist to Pierre. Because, um, you know, it is a very, very stressful thing for him. It's so massive, so many things can go wrong that he's under a lot of pressure and he's already built up quite a strong reputation as being a strong composer, you know, um, so he has to live up to that and he's very, very aware of that. nerve wracking thing of the rehearsals is, is probably the first two or three rehearsals because that was, that's when you, when you hear the music coming alive with the orchestra, is it making sense? And also, you're looking at feedback to see if the orchestra members and the, cho and the core and the, and the choir are, are getting it or digging it or enjoying it. After that, and any rehearsals after that, then it's really putting things together in the final touches. And really, the work then is handed over really to the performers, to the choir, to the soloists, and really the main dude is Connor, the conductor. The audiences will engage with it. And my last two projects, people have, so I don't see any reason why uh, this one, they won't. Well, first of all, even before the show, there was an incredible buzz. Um, I think we turned away almost 70 people at the door. There was a queue down the street, you know, and there was really important councillors in here, that, um, and very, very important people to the, to the project, people who gave us money. So there was all, all these kind of pressures. Um, but talking to everybody afterwards, it, they were just really, really blown away by it. And they just couldn't believe that there was, you know, the majority of people involved with this are, are students and that you know, they created a very, very professional um, performance for everybody to, to enjoy. And a short time later, the fall is stuttering. Behold. The narrator He's will tell the story, he drops out, and the music starts. And the visual is there for you to watch. And then this process happens, then the narrator starts again for the next movement. The music is very accessible. It's not traditional music. It's very filmatic music. Um, the music is there to support the story, and to bring you from start to finish with emotions, you know. I have an image in my mind, I think everybody else has as well, of Patrick in green robes, standing on a snake with his crozier. And to be fair, Pierre has totally blew that myth out of the water and really brought it into, into the 21st century. I expect people to, to come out and say, God, I didn't know a lot of things there about Patrick. And secondly, um, I would hope they come out and say, oh, I'd love to go and see that again. And great performance there from the Cork School of Music and the others involved. And the good news, I'm glad to say, continues to roll out for Pierre, who has been accepted into the Royal College of Music in London uh, to study for his Masters in Composition for the Screen. So who knows, in the future, we could be seeing his name up on the big screen. Now, Ireland 